Good morning. Welcome to our service for Sunday, the 11th of October. My name's Ollie. I'm one of the vicars here at St John's with St Mary's in Isleworth in West London. This morning, our service is continuing through our sermon series, looking at the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to have readings read by Robin, prayers led by Julie. Just wanted to mention a couple of notices beforehand. If you have children who are in the primary age, roughly kind of age bracket, then on Sunday evenings we have a kids story time, kids and family story time. Do check it out. It's on our Facebook page. Do join in there from 6.30pm this evening and every Sunday. Secondly, if you'd like to give to support the ministry of the church, then you can now do that through your smartphone. And to get that started is you send a text message to 07380 307 800. They're typing SJSM, then give, then a pound sign, then the amount you want to give. And if you want to set up a regular donation, then you just put P slash M afterwards. That'll take you to a web page with those details, then you can set up that donation. Third thing I want to mention is that we now have a church-wide WhatsApp group and we'd love you if you are a regular member of the church community or you'd like to be a regular member of the church community to join in with that WhatsApp group. Do get in contact with Dave or I in order to find out more. Let us turn our hearts to God as we use these words of preparation. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Spend a moment in confession, being assured of God's forgiveness, we can bring those things that are on our conscience today to him. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. So may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, and lead you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our collect prayer for this Sunday. Almighty God, increase in us your gift of faith, that, forsaking what lies behind, and reaching out to what is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hi kids, Rach B here. I hope you're all doing really well. Uh, today we're going to carry on and look at the next line from our Lord's Prayer. And the line we're going to do today is, lead us not into the time of trial. So when I say the word trial, what picture does that come up with in your head? What do you think of? Now we often think of a trial being where maybe you might try out for a particular team, like um, a football or swimming or even gymnastics team. So that can often be a trial that you have to do in order to get into that team. 
Um, or it could be that it uh, might be a type of trial where you have a, a trial run at something, which means you have a go before you decide that you want to carry on with it or that you want to pay for it or something. Um, so trial can be a really positive word. But sometimes when we pray this prayer, we're actually praying about a time of difficulty. So we're praying for um, deliverance and help from a time of testing or challenge in our lives. So um, we can go to God and we can say, lead us not into the time of trial, knowing that he is always there with us. So when we feel alone or afraid, we have to remember that we have a great big loving God who is still there with us even when we can't see him. And um, one of the things I thought we could do today is in our heads say the phrase, God is always with us. So five words, God is always with us. And I've got a really easy activity to quickly show you that you might want to have a go at. Now, I don't know if you can see, um, but I'm wearing a badge that Reverend Ollie gave me, which says, ask me to pray for you. Now you can make your own, um, it doesn't have to be difficult, all you actually need is a safety pin and if you ask mum or dad or somebody, an adult, to help you with this, okay, so you don't hurt yourself, um, you can take your safety pin and you can either just wear it plain like that and whenever you feel afraid or you're in a time of challenge, you can pray to God, um, deliver me from this time of trial and we know that God will hear you and it could be a private conversation between you and God. Or what you could do is if you want to decorate it, you could take a bead, a bead or two maybe, and a ribbon. I've actually used a pom-pom on one that I've made and I've put the pin through the pom-pom, okay, as you can see there, like that. And I have simply attached a ribbon to it that I had and I can now pin this onto my clothing and if I want to show it off to other people and encourage them to pray, I could wear that on the outside of my clothing. And that way people might then think, what does that mean? And you can tell them that you can pray to your heavenly father who will always be with you in times of challenge. So I hope you remember that today. Um, have fun. If you get to make them, please send the pictures in. We would love to share them on our video next week. Okay, God bless. Bye. A reading from Psalms 20. The Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your victory, and in the name of our God, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hand. Some take pride in chariots and some in horses, but our pride is in the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall but we shall rise and stand upright. Give victory to the King, O Lord, answer us when we call. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we continue uh, going through line by line the Lord's Prayer. And today we come to that line, lead us not into temptation. Or well, anyway, that's how this is often translated in English. Now, you will know that Jesus did not speak in English and the Bible wasn't actually first written down in English. I'm sure that's not news to you. So maybe a better translation, a more helpful translation for us is something like, may we not have those times of difficulties. Um, May we not suffer those trials that we might uh, be coming into. Bring us not into those times of trial. As we're looking at this, I, I want us uh, to see that the big narrative 
through the whole of this prayer, in fact, every time Jesus is talking about prayer, is that prayer is about us coming closer to our loving Father. You remember that's how he starts this prayer. Uh, our Father in heaven. Our Father. That's the big narrative, the thing behind all of this. And this is, I think, especially important as we look at this area of trials and difficulties. And we know, don't we, that there are plenty of those around. I don't need to tell you that. You can see it on the news. You can see it in your life from the last few months. I don't know what um, trials you might have faced, but there have been plenty of, of maybe relatively small ones like and missing out on that summer holiday that you're looking forward to, to harder ones, not being able to see family or friends uh, for, for many months or at all, uh, to things that might be even harder, like uh, being made redundant or even fired from our jobs, to greater difficulties and sufferings of the death or suffering of those close to us, friends, parents, or even children. We face difficulties all the time, week by week, uh, month by month, year by year, for now, but not forever. Let's be reminded of that, the words from this prayer. Uh, May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So it's not here yet. Everything is not perfect yet. But Jesus is giving us hope that one day it will be. So as now we face these trials. How do we pray? I, I think, frankly, I hear quite a lot of rubbish spoken about how God um, feels about us and the difficulties we face. A very common thing I hear is something like, and often this is said to somebody who is suffering, God will use this to help you learn, to help you go stronger, um, It's a bit like this person believes that God is like a really strict, mean PE teacher. I'm sorry if you're a PE teacher, but, uh, you know, like somebody who just really wants us to suffer in order that we will get stronger. And I don't think that's God. That's certainly not that loving, kind, caring father that Jesus was introducing us to as he was wanting us to pray. I don't believe that God ever enjoys us suffering, ever enjoys our difficulties we face. You see, Jesus is saying, may we not have them, isn't he? Well, why then would that be what God wants? Don't believe that God will ever enjoy your difficulties or suffering. Trials can make us wiser and stronger and more resilient, but that's incidental rather than the purpose. It's something that happens as well as, not why God, um, why they happen to us, why God allows them to happen to us. You see the difference? There are good trials that God wants us to face. Uh, Being a parent is uh, is a trial. If you're a parent, you will know this. If you're a child, well, we've all been children. And let me tell you that being a parent is a trial. It stretches us. Uh, We need to learn and grow, but it is for a good purpose. Jesus isn't saying never have a hard time. Good things often require hard work, require some hardship. You can't make a cake by just getting a bag of flour and woo, it just suddenly appears. You have to mix it and bake it and do all these kind of things. Good things require hard work. Jesus is not saying you won't ever have any hard work to do, but he is saying pray that you won't have those hardships that don't come from God. What can we do in these times of trial? Well, we can believe that God does not care. This isn't something we should be trying to do, by the way. We can have that belief that because this is so hard, God does not care about us. And that uh, can never be true. Now, I'm not saying that it's not uh, okay sometimes to shout 
at God, to be angry with God. That is, that is good, actually. I recommend it to you. Uh, you, can, you can be as angry as you want with God, as you feel with God, but never let your heart believe that God does not care. Don't harden your heart to his goodness because he's good and he's caring, but we can harden our hearts. We can say, no, you're not. I'm going to push you away, God. Remember that um, picture I've used several times of God the Father waiting for us uh, to come and spend time with him. And let us never say, well, I'm not going to go to him anymore. I'm not going to go into that place where God is. I'm not going to try and pray to him. I'm not going to try and speak to him. I'm not going to try and listen to him. Let's not reject him. Not, let's not uh, push him away. I've heard people do that in the midst of difficulty. And it's understandable when we're suffering, but it doesn't help us. Instead, use that analogy of God behind the door. Come and knock on the door and feel free to shout at God. Why, why, why is this happening? Why? We don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. Why is that happening? God can handle your anger in the face of whatever difficulties you or those you love may face. He can handle it. He's not going to be offended by it. Don't run away from him instead. And also, never think that you can sort out your problems, my problems, better than God. The temptation of sin, this is. Sin is trying to live our lives, our ways, with us in control. Let me give an example. Say a relationship is breaking down and you are hurt by a person and angry with this person and you resolve, I will be done with them or I'll try and sort them out. But you never ask God what he can do. You never let him guide you. You never let him heal and restore your relationship. If you push him out of the way in the midst of difficulty, or only give him a moment to be involved, then that's just, as the Americans say, dumb, because he is much better at helping us with our difficulties and problems than we are. Or imagine that um, you don't have a job and you really need a job. You need the money You need to know what you should be doing with your life. But you never let God guide you as to what job to apply for. You never let God tell you what you're good at, what he's calling you to. You never ask him. You don't listen. You're not letting him speak, do something in the midst of your difficulty. That's just foolishness. He is much better helping us with our problems than we are. So in these times of trial, rather than trying to sort out our lives for ourselves, we need to come close to our loving Father. We need to know that he doesn't want them for us. We need to pray that we won't have them for us. That's what Jesus taught us to do. May we not have those times of difficulty. That's my prayer for us, for you, for our church, for our world. And when we do, what do we do? We come back to our loving Father. We need to come back to the door and knock. And we know that he's waiting on the other side. And he's saying, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for the difficulties, the pain, the tragedies, the trials that you have been facing and you might be facing today. I'm so sorry. I'm so sad. See him, your loving father, with tears um, falling down his face, coming to you to wrap his arms around you and say, I love you. I care about you. I've been waiting for you. I will never desert you. And know that he's wanting to pour out blessings on you. I'm going to pray for God's blessings on you, that we won't have those times of trial and difficulties, and that when we do, we will come to the Father. But I don't know, I have a feeling that at the moment, 
what we really need is to know the goodness of God, that he blesses us. So wherever you are, wherever you're watching this now, whatever difficulties you're facing or you're fearful of facing, um, receive God's blessing for you. Let's pray. Our Father, our Father, you are, you are wanting to bless the whole of creation, the whole of this earth, every single person. And you especially uh, want to bless those who let um, themselves be blessed. So may you bless every single person here. May they know fear to be gone. pain of isolation or loneliness to be gone. May they see provision in places. You, know, you might be desperate, you need something, you need something practical, you might need money. May you see God blessing you now. May you have what you need, not from your own strength, but from him. May God bless relationships relationships that are broken, uh, relationships for decades that have been broken. May they be restored, blessed by your loving Father. May new relationships, uh, I, I can see, you know, new romantic relationships, exciting relationships flourishing as God blesses you in your future. Receive God's blessing. It's what the loving Father wants to do again and again and again. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. Heavenly Father, your son Jesus taught us to pray that we should not be led into times of trial and temptation. We recognise how powerful the influences are in our world which can distract and ensnare. We pray for your spirit's power to bring freedom to all who suffer from addictions or from any destructive habits of life. We pray that in these uncertain times, we be granted freedom from fear and have faith to trust in you for our future. We pray your church will be a shining light in dark times and we ask your support and guidance to those who seek to alleviate society's ills, including social workers, therapists, prison staff and chaplains, hospital staff and so many others in the caring profession. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we pray for our government at this time. We ask for wisdom for our leaders at national and local level, seeking to manage the spread of the pandemic we pray that they might bring courage and clarity as we all seek a way forward. We pray for the situation in the United States where the presidential elections, race protests and concern about the coronavirus have created a climate of anxiety for many. For Christians in position of leadership and responsibility around the world, may they bring hope and compassion as they seek to diligently carry out their work in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we recognise the cruelty and unfairness of suffering and disease, and we pray now alongside all in pain, crying out to you for comfort and healing. We thank you that in Jesus, you share our sorrow and give us the grace to bear it. We pray for those who are suffering directly or indirectly because of the COVID pandemic, Please bring relief, peace and healing. We commit to you in prayer those who are grieving the loss of friends and family. And we're today thinking particularly of the Wynn family as they plan for the funeral of James's dad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We're nearly at the end of this service. Uh, we're going to um, sing along, if you want, to a song that, uh, that talks about um, when we are hungry for God, when we're maybe at the end of our tether, maybe we're struggling, uh, that we can come to him and he will bless us and refresh us. fountain deep your heart in the stream of life let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of his mercy as deep cries out joining us for this service. Uh, please do connect with us through the week. If you'd like to join us in our buildings for our services, then do look at the website for more information on that. Also, do be in touch if there is anything we can pray for you. We'd love to pray for you and for those around you. But a prayer of blessing for you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God 
and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.